welcome to MSP lecture series on main group chemistry. Uh, in this lecture, uh, I shall continue discussion on oxides of heavier group 14 elements. Uh, so, in my previous lecture, I was discussing about germanium oxide. Let me continue discussion on tin oxide. Uh, tin oxide, if you consider SNO2 uh, with tin in plus 4 state, is soluble in many acids but it exhibits amphoteric behavior and also reacts with alkalis. Reaction occurs in strongly alkaline media to give a stannate. For example, SNO2 uh, when treated with uh, hydrochloric acid, it forms Uh, hexachlorostanate. Similarly, uh, when it is treated with uh, uh, KOH, in aqueous medium, it gives again uh, hydroxide, hexahydroxystanate. So, oxides of uh, germanium, tin and lead are very similar to rutile structure. Uh, you can see here, uh, here uh, these germane main group uh, elements of germanium, tin or lead, they are essentially are octahedrally surrounded by uh, 6 oxygen atoms, whereas oxygen is bridging or it is tri bridging in this fashion. Uh, 6 coordinated metal and 3 coordinated oxygen is the common feature of uh, rutile structure or rutile structure. These oxides as I showed are essentially amphoteric and dissolve in both acids and bases. And of course, hydrated uh, tin and lead 2 plus ions undergo substantial uh, hydrolysis. So, I have a question here, why is the tin 2 plus ion is more extensively hydrolyzed in aqueous solution than Pb 2 plus? The answer is very simple. Mm, I read again answer I have uh, given in the slide. The SN 2 plus ion has a relatively larger uh, charge density compared to lead 2 plus owing to a smaller ionic radius. We can compare the ionic radius of tin with lead in case of uh, uh, tin 2 plus is 93 picometer, whereas in case of lead 2 plus is 119 picometer. So, uh, tin 2 plus polarizes water molecule more strongly resulting in increased loss of H plus and formation of complexes with coordinated hydroxide ion. That means here again the difference in the reactivity stems due to the fact that tin has better charge to size ratio compared to uh, lead being smaller in size. So, that means how the size of ions can have dramatic impact on some of these properties can be clearly seen from this example. I have a question here, the lead forms the mixed oxystate oxides. That means if we consider Pb3O4, you can see that uh, we have two different type of lead ions. Uh, so, calculate the theoretical yield of lead 4 ethonate or acetate in the reaction of 1 gram of Pb3O4 with the excess of pure acetic acid containing some quantity of acetic anhydride. Essentially, the role of acetic anhydride is to remove water to give back acetic acid. And note that PbO and PbO2, so PbO plus 2 state and PbO2 plus 4 state react with acetic acid to form lead acetate and lead tetraacetate respectively. Okay. So, let me work out on this problem here. We know that, okay, for example, composition of Pb3O4, it is essentially combination of PbO twice and PbO2. So, that means we have two lead atoms in plus 2 state and one lead datum in plus 4 state leads to the composition of Pb3O4. And let us look into the reaction of PbO as well as PbO2 with acetic acid. 
Now, first look into the reaction of 2 PBO with uh, 4 equivalents of acetic acid. It gives 2 PB OAC, this can also be written as OAC 2 times and uh, here we get 2 equivalents of water. Now, let us look into the reaction of PBO2 with 4 equivalents of uh, acetic acid. This gives essentially lead tetraacetate. This overall reaction uh, is PB3O4 plus 8 CH3COOH. This is giving PBOAC 4 times plus 2 PBOAC 2 times plus 4 H2O. Oh, essentially, I have added up 1 and 2. So, that means this is the overall reaction involving PB3O4 with acetic acid. And of course, as I mentioned, acetic anhydride, the role of acetic anhydride is essentially to abstract this water to prevent the backward reaction. So, we need to add that many uh, acetic anhydride here. Okay. So, now calculate the molecular weight now. So, now if we the, the molecular weight of PB 3O4, 4 is essentially 687.9. So, that means if we consider 1 gram that is equivalent to 0 0.0014 mole. Okay, so, that means PB OAC twice is 326.0 that means should form 2 into 0 0.0015 mole. So, that is equal to 0.9128 gram. So, then PB OAC 4 times is molecular weight is 446 okay, should form essentially 0 0.0014 mole. So, this accounts for about 0 0.626 grams. Okay. So, uh, this is how you can uh, calculate the amount of uh, lead acetate forms and lead tetraacetate formed in this reaction. Of course, uh, we can also look into the uses of uh, group 14 element oxides. Uh, silica glass operate is highly insensitive to thermal shock owing to the low coefficient of thermal expansion of silica and borosilicate glass that is essentially also known as pyrex contains about 10 to 15 percent of B2O3 and has a lower melting point than silica glass. And soda glass contains added alkali which converts some of the SiO SI bridges in the silica network into terminal SiO groups reducing the melting point below that of borosilicate glass. Now, let us look into the carbides. Carbides are the numerous binary compounds of carbon with metals and metalloids which are classified as as follows saline hydride carbides or ionic carbides which are essentially formed by group 1 and group 2 elements and also to an extent by aluminum and metallic carbides are essentially uh, made up of uh, trans elements that is d block elements and metalloid carbides are essentially formed by boron and silicon and saline carbides uh, means uh, uh, carbides of alkali metals and alkaline earth metals on hydrolysis essentially produce the corresponding hydrocarbons. For example, if you take simple carbide that gives methane when it is hydrolyzed and you can see uh, the distribution of carbides in the periodic table. You can see this uh, saline hydrides, uh, saline carbides are uh, ionic carbides are essentially formed by group 1 and group 2 elements 
and to an extent aluminum and then molecular carbon compounds are essentially formed by B block elements such as 50, group 15, 16 and 17. They form equivalent carbon to the element bonds and metallic ones are essentially formed by transition metals you can see here in this color here and metalloids are essentially by boron and silicon. So, this is how you can classify the carbides of the elements in the periodic table by looking into the nature and the properties chemical as well as physical properties. And saline carbides are essentially formed by as I mentioned high electropositive metals and uh, non metal carbides are mechanically hard and are also semiconductors. Saline carbides of group 1 and 2 can also be divided into 3 subcategories intercalation compounds for example, if we take alkali metals and pass their vapors uh, into the graphite sheets around 300 to 400 degree centigrade we get intercalated compounds. In case of uh, uh, potassium it is a KC8 that means the composition is uh, 1 potassium atom for 8 carbon atoms and here essentially potassium sits uh, between uh, 8 carbon atoms 4 above and 4 below giving a sort of anti square prismatic structure for potassium. In case of calcium uh, carbide, uh, calcium is placed uh, in a octahedral environment, uh, uh, okay. uh, so it, it goes and also we have dicarbides having C2 2 minus uh, anion or methyls having C4 minus anion. Uh, graphite intercalation compounds are formed by group 1 metals. The dicarbides are formed by a broad range of electropositive metals that already I had discussed talking about uh, the chemistry of group 1, group 1 and group 2 elements. Okay. Uh, let us look into the reactions of metal oxides with carbon. Okay. So, that also leads to the formation of uh, carbides. For example, uh, if you take calcium oxide and treat this one with uh, carbon essentially it is a reduction process and that means that requires very high temperature of uh, 2000 degree centigrade it gives calcium carbide. Uh, of course, reaction of ethane uh, with a metal ammonia solution gives the corresponding carbide. For example, if you take uh, sodium in ammonia, liquid ammonia and treat this one with uh, uh, acetylene, it leads to the formation of Na to C uh, solid plus H2 comes out. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, as I already discussed the chemistry of uh, uh, electropositive carbides in their respective groups, just uh, let me write this reaction how they undergo hydrolysis. If it is treated with uh, 2 equivalents of water, it forms calcium hydroxide plus acetylene comes out. So, let us look into the compounds of uh, group 14 elements with nitrogen. Uh, cyanide is there very important in uh, coordination chemistry CN minus forms uh, numerous complexes many d block uh, metal ions. Its coordination to the active sets of enzymes such as cytochrome C oxidizes oxidase accounts for its high toxicity. The, the, uh, toxic nature of cyanide in uh, living beings or in human beings comes into picture because it, it forms a very stable uh, complex with uh, uh, cytochrome C oxidase that accounts for its high ox toxicity. Cyanogen is a toxic extremely flammable gas melting point is 245 Kelvin and uh, boiling point is 252 Kelvin. Silicon nitride Si3N4 is used in ceramic and refractory material applications. Tin 4 nitride that is the SN3N4 was first isolated in 1999. Tin nitride is the first nitride spinel that is stable under ambient conditions. Cyanide is a, a pseudo halogen, its chemistry resembles that of halogen atoms and, and 
its physical and chemical properties also resembles uh, halogens that is the reason they are called pseudo halogens. For example, azide is also called a pseudo halogen and it forms uh, C 2 N 2 uh, H C N for example, uh, if you take uh, H G C N twice and treat this one with uh, H G C L 2 at 570 Kelvin, it gives cyanogen uh, plus H G to Cl2. Okay. One can also prepare this one starting from copper sulphate for example on heating the aqueous solution it gives C2N2 So, uh, cyanogen has a linear structure uh, something like this okay, and, and of course, uh, very similar to here we can compare here the uh, C triple bond N distance is bond distance is 115 picometer and here it is 116 marginal difference is there. And here uh, uh, this distance C C bond distance is 137 picometer here of course here this C H bond distance is 106.5 picometer okay. and so both are linear. Uh, cyanogen burns in air uh, with a very hot and violent flame uh, that is because of formation of carbon dioxide and N2. Hydrogen cyanide is uh, extremely toxic and flammable, is extremely toxic and flammable, colorless volatile liquid and essentially one can prepare in large amounts by high temperature catalytic partial oxidation of methane and ammonia. Uh, we will show you the method of preparation of uh, hydrogen cyanide. platinum or rhodium catalyst and temperature required is very high 1250 to 1550 Kelvin and 2 bar pressure. Mild oxidizing agents convert cyanide to cyanogen but with more powerful oxidants such as PBO or neutral MnO4 minus convert Cn minus to cyanate ion. Okay. So, for example, okay, so So, uh, silicon nitride Si3N4 is a white chemically inert amorphous powder which can be prepared by reaction or combining silicon and nitrogen at very high temperature. For example, one can also uh, start from tetrachlorosilane. For example, on treatment of tetrachlorosilane with uh, ammonia leads to the formation of uh, uh, amide compound okay, which on further heating gives this compound 
and which on further heating gives essentially SI3 N4. Okay. Yeah. Similarly, SN3 N4 can also be made okay, uh, by starting from SNI4 plus KNH2. Okay, of course, I am not balancing the equation, one can generally prepare by treating SNI4 with uh, uh, potassium amide, that means potassium in liquid ammonia at 243 Kelvin. Sulphides of group 14 elements are quite well known, disulphides of carbon carbon disulfide, silicon, germanium and tin show the properties that might be expected to accompany the increasingly metallic character of the elements. The monosulphides of germanium, tin and PB all are obtained by precipitation from aqueous media. Uh, silicon disulfide is prepared by heating silicon in sulphur vapor. The disulfides of germanium and tin are precipitated when H2S is passed into acidic solution of uh, germanium 4 or tin 4 compounds. Lead 4 is too powerful an oxidizing agent to coexist with S2 minus. So, and hence PbS2 is not known similar to uh, PbO2. Of course, PbO2 one can make whereas in case of sulfur uh, PbS2 uh, is not known. Okay. When shaken with solutions of group 1 metal sulphides, carbon disulfide dissolves readily to give trithiocarbonates uh, having composition M2CS3 uh, uh, that contain essentially a thiocarbonate ion. For example, uh, barium thiocarbonate when it is treated with uh, HCl at 273 Kelvin, it gives BaCl2 plus uh, thiocarboxylic acid. Okay. And of course, silicon disulfide is prepared by heating uh, sulfur in uh, uh, sulfur vapor uh, with silicon. Both the structure of this and the chemistry of SiO2 show no parallels with SiO2 and SiS2 is instantly hydrolyzed. Okay. So, SiO2 is very stable towards hydrolysis whereas SiS2 readily undergoes hydrolysis to form SiO2 plus 2H2S. Uh, some of the sulphides of uh, tin and germanium have cluster structures. For example, if you consider uh, GE4 S yes, 10 2 minus uh, which can be prepared uh, starting from germanium sulphide okay, uh, with sulphide source essentially uh, cesium sulphide one can use aqueous solution in presence of cesium plus. Okay. Cesium sulphide one can use aqueous solution of cesium sulphide and germanium sulphide when they mix it together it leads to the formation of G4 S10 2 minus. Lead 2 sulphide occurs naturally as galena PBS and that adopts sodium chloride lattice. And it forms a black precipitate. It, so, that means in the qualitative test, uh, formation of lead sulphate from the corresponding salts is used as a uh, identification or qualitative test for uh, the uh, cations. For example, if you take lead nitrate, uh, treat this one with H2S, aqueous solution of lead nitrate when it is bubbled with H2S gas it gives PBS plus 2HNO3 and this is a black precipitate. So, this indicates presence of some of these uh, 
uh, sulfophilic metal ions. The, the structure of a few of these uh, higher sulfides I have shown here SN2 S64 minus here or G4 S10 has a bi uh, a cage structure or it is it's similar to pyro structure SN2 S7 6 minus very similar to pyrosilicate and of course halides of group 14 elements are also quite well known. The stability of tetrahalomethanes decreases uh, from uh, CF4 to CI4, the rates of nucleophilic displacement increases greatly from fluorine to iodine and lie in the order uh, like this. And of course, CF4 and CCL4 are thermodynamically unstable with, with respect to hydrolysis. CCL4 plus 2H2O So, carbon tetrafluid is extremely inert and may be prepared by the reaction of silicon carbide with F2 with second product being SiF4. So, a convenient laboratory scale synthesis in of CF4 involves uh, the reaction of calcium cyanamide with uh, fluorine. Uh, so, let me stop uh, at this stage, uh, continue uh, uh, discussion on group 14 halides in my next lecture. Until then, have a present reading of uh, uh, group 14 chemistry. Thank you.